Welcome to part 2 of the Underwater World Shaders tutorial by Peerplay. In this part we are going to start writing the shader for the ground plane. This will be a vertex displacement tessellation surface shader using simplex noise. It sounds more complicated than it is. Create a new project in Unity. Now we are going to use an external noise function created by Ashima Arts and ported from GLSL to HLSL by LexDRL. You can find a download link to the Unity package in the description of this video. Import this package into the project. This should create a folder shaders with the noise simplex.cg include file. In the same folder as the noise simplex we're going to create a new shader, standard server shader and we're going to call this the noise ground. In our shader we will reference the noise simplex.cg include file and for this to work the files must be at the same folder path. Now let's also add a plane to the scene. So go to your game object, 3D object and select the plane. And after we have written the shader we will apply the material of the shader to this plane. Now let's open up the noise ground shader. Now let's clean up the shader to only the things that we need. So I'm going to remove these comments. And this is all about GPU instancing, we don't need that. Let's remove this line here. Let's remove this line as well. We don't need alpha, so let's remove the alpha as well. Level of detail, we don't need that. And that's about it. So let's start at the top. We're going to change custom to peer play. Now I'm going to set up this shader to make use of tessellation. If you are unclear about what tessellation is, follow the link to the video that should pop up now in which I'll explain the basics of tessellation. Let me increase the font size a little bit so we can see everything a little bit better. And we're going to start by adding a property for our tessellation. And we'll call this tess. And the name of the test will be tessellation. And it's going to be a range value between 1 and 8, which we'll set to 4 by default. Now let's add this float value to the subshader. So we're going to type float and we'll call this test. Now in the pragma, we're going to add tessellate and we'll call this test. Now we need to return a float4 value to test, so we're going to add a float4 and we'll call this test. And let's open close that one and we're going to return the value test, which we'll declare in the properties. Now when we're using tessellation, we need to set the pragma target to at least 4.6. So let's do that. Save this script and go back to Unity. And in Unity we're going to create a material based on the shader. So right click, create, and go to material, and we're going to name this noise ground. Now drag and drop this noise ground to the plane, and you'll see that it has tessellation that we can set between 1 and 8. Great. So let's move on. So we want to offset the vertices of our mesh based on noise. So we need to add the vertex to the shader. So let's type vertex in the pragma and we're going to call that vert. Now let's create a void called vert. So underneath the tessellation we're going to type a void and we'll call this vert. And we're going to need in out data of the app data and we'll call that v. We still need to create the app data. So in between these lines we're going to add the noise. But let's first create a struct for the app data. So underneath the pragma, I'm going to say a new struct and we'll call this app data. And in the app data, we need to reference the vertices, the normals and the texture coordinates. So let's say a float for, we'll call this vertex. And this is called position. Now we also need the normals, which is a float 3, and we'll call that normal, and this is called normal with capitals. Now we also need a texture coordinate, which is a float 2, and we'll call this texture coord, and this is in capitals texture coord 0. So this data is going to be pushed towards the variable fee. 
which is v because it's vertex, so we can use it and say v dot vertex, blah blah blah. So we're going to use the noise simplex. So let's scroll to the top, and underneath the pragma, we're going to say hashtag include, and we're going to include between parentheses the noise simplex dot cg include. Now we can use the functions that are in the noise simplex. So let's check out the noise simplex. Now it says that in the usage we can just call the s noise and we can import any flow 2, 3 or 4 and based on whether we import a flow 2, 3 or 4 we'll get a 2, 3 or 4 dimensional noise. So let's go back to the shader and implement that noise. And I forgot a semicolon after the struct so there we go. And let's add a few variables that we need for our noise to control it. So we're going to add a noise scale value. So we'll type noise scale. And it's going to be named noise scale. And that is going to be a float value. We'll set that to 1. Now we also need a noise frequency. Which we'll call noise frequency. Which is a float value and we'll also set that to 1. And the third thing we'll add is a noise offset so we can change the offset in its x, y and z positions. So we'll call this noise offset. We'll name it noise offset and it's going to be a vector which is by default 0, 0, 0, 0. And we're going to add these values to this subshader. So let's add a new line here and we're going to say float is called the noise scale and the other one is the noise frequency and we we'll also need a float 4 which will be the noise offset. Now we're ready to implement the simplex noise function and the noise function returns a float value so we're going to create a float and we'll call this noise and it's going to be the s noise which is the function from the simplex noise script and in this function we can input a flow 2, 3 or 4 and in this case we're going to input a flow 3 so we get 3 dimensional noise so the noise in the x axis is going to be the v.vertex.x plus the noise offset dot x now we'll do the same for the y and the z values so we can just copy paste this, paste it here and paste it here again and we'll just have to change the values to a y, y value and the z value and the z. Now we can scale this entire function by the noise scale so let's type here the noise scale multiplied by the noise function and inside of the noise function but after the flow 3 has been set we're going to multiply this by the noise frequency. Let's close that one off. And now we just have to apply the noise to the vertices. So let's say v dot vertex though it's y plus is the noise value. Now that should be all to make this shader work. So let's save the script and go back to Unity. And now you can see the noise applied to the y-axis of the vertices. And we can change the tessellation on the surface, up or down. We can change the noise scale. We can change the noise frequency. And we can change the offset in its x, in its y, or in its z. Now the vertices have been shifted in their y position but the normals are still all facing upwards. So in the next part we will recalculate the normals as well. This tutorial series is made possible by the amazing patrons at my Patreon. If you would like to support me creating free Unity tutorials about audio visuals, algorithms and shaders, you can become a patron as well. You will then get access to all exclusive source file content of the tutorials. Go to patreon.com slash peerplay for more information. Special thanks to Devin the Dude and Derek Vechter. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. 
If you would like to stay updated to new release tutorials, subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on. Hope to see you again in the next part. Happy coding!